Greetings, my friends, and thank you for tuning in today. And thank you also for the wonderful year that I've had in 2014. Uh, all my dreams are really coming true, and I'm getting to do art full-time, which has been a dream I've had all my life. So it's because of your support and because you like my videos that I've got these opportunities, and I'm very grateful to you. So today we're going to make our little people. I use them for uh, pins, for hats and coats. Um, the souffle clay is light enough that you can pin them on any fabric. Uh, so since that came out, that uh, gives us more opportunities to wear our pins, and they make nice gifts. So we're going to do that, and then at the end of the video, I have a little message for you about what's coming in 2015. So if you have a minute, check that out. I welcome your comments, and uh, thank you again for all your support. So here we are. We're going to start with angels. And um, I think we talked a little bit about this online on Facebook and stuff, about how if this is the easiest one, because you're really just using triangular cane that you can use in any size. I keep it small because most people don't want a gigantic pin, but that's up to you. Um, with regard to the face cane, uh, I took kind of an informal poll and universally 100% of the people that answered did not have any face cane on hand and you know, they don't really want to make any right now because you know it's a giant uh, project. So maybe one day we'll do a whole face cane video, but for now let's just get around that and we'll make our little faces uh, a different way. So the first thing you want to do is lay out some kind of backing. So in this case, we're going to make her head, and what I do is just make an oval uh, shape. Uh, if you want it to be flattened, you can slice off the back of it, or you can leave it like this. I don't want it to bulge out too much in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and slice off the back and start working with her head just in this uh, oval shape. She doesn't even need a neck or anything because uh, her dress comes up there, okay? So we're going to lay her head at the top and just leave a little room for her in case you want any bouffant nature to her hair, okay? So she's got enough face for now and we're taking a piece of triangle cane, the larger one, and we're just laying it out here for her dress. And the wings are going to go up close to her face and we're going to cut them at an angle kind of and both reduces the size, which in these pins you're kind of always trying to sacrifice size and get, some, get rid of it. And it also brings them up closer to her head, kind of gives her a little fluttery look, you know. You're kind of cutting them at an angle so that you can easily push them toward her head and body. I'm going to take a little bit off the point of this so her head doesn't look so floaty on top of there. Okay, yeah, that looks better. So, uh, yeah, you can kind of dull out the point if you want to in there. Her chin's looking a little bit too um, skeleton-y. So I'm going to push it back and make it a little more dainty. I think I like that better. So those are the decisions you're going to want to make. You know, uh, every one of them is going to turn out different, and I think that's a good thing. So she'll soon have her little mouth, but in the meantime, she's got a head, two wings, and a body. And then uh, we do the hair. And what I usually do is take a piece of scrap the color of the hair that I'm going to make. And I kind of make a, a little base for it underneath. And that way you don't have to make a million hairs and you know you don't have that see-through kind of look that you don't want. So none of us ladies like to have thin see-through hair, I know that. So now she's kind of got you know a hair look. I'm going to turn this over for you. I guess I could have done that before, couldn't I? Okay, so she's there. She's got her her um, little cap of hair on, and she's got her dress and her wings. So then I take some hair pieces that I've made already and kind of twist them up together to give her a hairdo. And I do all kinds of different hairdos. You're going to want to. She can have a fancy braided uh, chignon. How do you say that? Chignon. Somebody, uh, anyway, uh, she can have all kinds of different hairdos. And you'll want to design the hair because it's the most fun part. So she looks pretty good like that. Okay. 
And then I usually take some really small ones at some point in time and bring them down into the sides. And they've got to be really small, of course, because you know, look at the scale we're looking at here. So I take some really incy weensy pieces and just kind of stretch them out. You can let them get really, really small because they're not going to break off. They're going to be, you know, stuck here on the on the wings and on the face and everything. So they're really more sturdy than you might think. Okay, and she's got kind of an empty spot over here. I'll give her a little bit more more style over here. Okay. And then you want to take your uh, cutter. This is that Sculpey 5-in-1 tool. It's really been saving me because, you know, I, I had some pretty some pretty underwhelming uh, craft knives. And I recently got this Sculpey 5-in-1 thing. And gosh, it's got a really nice knife on it. It, it seems like it's made for clay. It's sort of thicker and yet it's sharper. So... And they give you a bunch of other stuff on there. You can check it out. You're going to cut around it. And kind of make it a little bit neater with your fingers afterwards. So that's what I usually do is I just take most of the bulk off and set it aside. And make it make a nice neat line around here and then I can pick her up and do my detail here see and it's a lot easier than cutting it absolutely perfect because I think you guys know by now that absolutely perfect and I uh, don't have much in common so anyway that's how you do this um, so here's our little angel all baked I put Sculpey Gloss Glaze over her wings and her dress and here and there on her hair for a little shine and over her lips. Um, I want to tell you, I had originally planned to paint the features on at least the lips, but I'm just no good at it. So what I did is uh, I used a, a uh, toothpick and a little bit of acrylic paint and I could control that a lot better for something so small. You're going to want to see what you want to do with that because some of you can paint. You know, I just, uh, you know, I'm no good. Um, and also, uh, uh, the eyebrows and the blush are done with colored pencil. And they stay on really well. <clears throat> I put the uh, Sculpey Gloss Glaze over the lips so it won't ever chip off. And she's ready. Now, I was telling you about those um, pins that I put on there. And so I'm just going to be taking my Gorilla Glue and putting a thin line across here but before I do that I'm going to score it so when I decide where I want it you want it as high as you can without overlap uh, because they hang better that way so I'm going to be up in this area here and really all you do is rough it up a little bit it just helps the glue dig in so you you score it or rough it up and then you take your pin and uh, put uh, just a thin line of uh, Gorilla Glue here. And then when you stick this on, the Gorilla Glue is going to push through those holes. It forms a really good bond. So what I do is I stick it on there, I make sure it's the way I want it, and then you spritz it with water. And that causes a, just a, a little bit of foaming. And out the holes comes the Gorilla Glue. And then it's almost like a little screw, see what I mean? It's really holding it on there. I've had no problems with these coming off ever. So I just wanted to tell you about that. I'm not going to do it right now because we're going to make our vampire. So with our vampire, we're going to start by establishing our size. And that's the size we're going to have. Now this part is not hard, but it takes a couple tries sometimes. You guys might be sculptors, which would really help me if I were one, but I'm not. Uh, so what I do is I start to pinch out a body shape. <clears throat> I make the head and the body separate. Some people I've seen can just whip out the whole thing, you know. Well, that's not me. So I'm going to make his body. This is a lot more clay than I need, but, you know, it's easier to take away some than to try to add it, right? 
and he's starting to be almost the right size okay yeah you know he's almost there in fact you know he's there because what I'm going to do now is make the feet now I make the feet in one piece because that way their little shoes never you know break off and it's easier and the feet are extremely unsophisticated you'll be astonished the feet he's kind of he's kind of burly but I like that in the guy that's okay um, so you, what you do is you cut it off even and wait, wait till you see how you know artistic and, and uh, amazing this is I take a tool and I make a line where his feet will be feet foot foot and then you give him like a shoey look I just make a shoe okay and really that's all I'm doing if you want to make the guy some better shoes I think you should it's just I'm not doing it because you know it's just not where my uh, talent or interest lies so that those are shoes he's done so now we'll put him here and his feet need to go right at the bottom okay so he can be standing up the right way there's his little body so there's something you need to know about this arm okay this arm is going to be holding up his cape so that he can be mysteriously um, you know hiding from us behind his cape and sneaking around so that little thing at the end is going to be his hand because right there above it will be his cuff so what you got so far is you got this little guy and he's got a cuff and a hand and he's got an arm and he's got his his uh, cape his capey arm okay so I'm going to raise it up a little bit okay so you say to yourself geez pan he's kind of like chunky and stuff well not true what's going to happen is he's going to be um, cut out of here and that way we can make him in shape we want but don't forget this arm needs to stay up okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to fit this little head on there okay And I'm going to cut around his base and I'm going to cook him for about uh, 30 minutes to make sure he's nice and strong. So this is the way I made his hair. It's just a little rectangle of black and I cut out um, this shape with a small round cutter, the Sculpey cutter. And then, you know, I put it on his head and shaped it uh, around the way I wanted it. And I didn't show you that part, so I've added that now, okay? So he's already been uh, cured or baked, um, and he's nice and firm, so we can dress him up. So I do the painting part first, and I'm going to paint his white shirt on. Um, his uh, face and hands are already the right color. And then I'll show you how we do the pants. Okay, so here's little Drackey. Um, he's got his shirt painted on and I painted his shoes black and for the face on this one you know I showed you the uh, ball head pins last time well this time I just uh, made a dot for each eye with uh, the tiny uh, Sculpey ball stylus it makes very uniform dots you dip it in you dot dip it in and dot and it really makes a nice uniform uh, spot each time for something like this and then I use my toothpick my trusty toothpick and um, I uh, took some white and just made his little you know a little shine on his eyes for the mouth I uh, mixed up some um, mauve and it's made out of green and red just tiny bits of green and red um, in some white uh, this is it here and actually uh, it took longer to mix up this color than it did to do all the painting because you know I started obsessing about it so uh, Anyway, uh, mauve is nice because it's manly, you know, more so than pink or red. Um, and then uh, the teeth, the little fangs, you know, they're just a dot of white. So some of y'all are painters, and I can imagine what you could do with the face, but this is just what I do because that's what I can do. So now we're going to do his pants. And what I like to do is just drape a thin piece of the pants color. In this case, it's gray. And I make kind of a, a fold down here so that it can go down the V of his legs. 
You don't want him too high water, you know, so he looks like grandpa or something. And then um, just take one of your tools. The ball styluses have um, this flat, nice edge on them. And uh, the five and one tool thing has a tool with a, has a nice flat edge that you can snap on there. They're magnetic. So anything like that that helps you to do what you need to do with the shapes. You can use some bacon bond on there if you want to. Uh, and then with the with the shirt, it's just going to kind of stay the way it is. Sometimes I make them a little cummerbund out of um, you know maroon, kind of make them look snazzy. We can make them a belt, which I'll probably do out of black. The clothes are one of the most fun parts that you're going to have the most fun with. So take your time with the clothes, make them the way you want. Lots of times I make some white ruffles, or just, you know, ruffles out of the chest material, and put them down the front. You can dot little buttons onto there. This is way fun. So he's got his pants on. I'm going to trim it right at the side where these, uh, where the seam is between the backing and him, and that makes a really easy place to cut. So just settle it down just like that, and make sure it's nice and tight down to the sides. I've never had them come up, but you know, the bacon bond would probably be a really good idea. I am going to use it probably for the cape, because that's something that would be more likely to detach over time. So there's his pants, and I'm just settling them down. And you see now why we paint them before we start to dress them up, because you'd be hard-pressed to get your paint where you want it to go. But if you forget, go ahead and paint it, because, you know, the cool thing about painting is you can touch it up. You get some black on the white, you know, put a dot of white over it. You get some white on the black, same thing. So just have fun with it, because um, the dressing part's my favorite part. I like to design a lot of really, you know, fun clothes for my little people, and that's the part that I... Uh, like to take my time on. So like you see this one, this is Carrie. I haven't had the uh, heart to um, pour the red paint over her head yet because she's so pretty. But see she's all prommed out with her little tiny wrist corsage and all that stuff and her jewelry and then the hair. When you're doing hair on one of these just put it on the backing, you know, on the inside of the backing before you start. So for the cape, I take it and I start it on his arm because that's where it definitely needs to end up, a little bit of the cuff showing. And then I push it down. We can trim that part off. We're not worried about it. Push it down. Kind of get it settled. And go back over to your other side where you want it to come down here. Now I usually trim it pretty flush here at the shoulder area. It's just neater and it's easier. That's fine. And bring it back in. Okay? So now all you've done is just um, wrap it around him the way you want it to be. You can put a big fold in the front here. You know, sometimes it's nice to make kind of a kind of a wavy effect. Okay, hangs over his shoulder. And then take it in the back and settle it down. Push it down like that. You know, it's just nice that this is clay. So <laughs> always remember that this clay is going to do what we tell it to do. Sometimes you're thinking, oh my god, it doesn't fit. You know, it's all flopping around. Hey, who cares? It's clay. So now We've got this part, and I'm going to trim it a little bit because I want to make a spot where I want to put his, his uh, collar on. So I can add a little bacon bond under here on his arm, maybe a little bit behind him. I probably will do that. And you know your bacon bond. Well, I'll show you. Um, I'm so close up right now that that's why I'm not bringing out a lot of things because I don't want my arms waving around in the frame, and it's really annoying for you. Okay, so I can take some bacon bond. I can put it behind him there. I can take a little bit, make sure it's up underneath here. And it does help. You don't need a lot, but it's nice to know it's not going to come undone. Good where the paint is. Give a little insurance there. Okay, 
So there's his cape up to now. I'm going to cut off some of this to make room for his uh, collar. Okay, I'm not going to cut that one piece off just yet because I want to see where I want it to go. So here's his collar, and I kind of put it on, you know, like the same way you would if you're sewing, up and over. So I lay it down this way first, and then kind of turn it. You can make it nice and pointy. And I kind of flatten it in the back so that the pin lays nicely. So here he is. Uh, when you get to this part of the cape, the, the arm that's exposed, uh, go ahead and use his arm to kind of secure this cape so that it's not flimsy and it doesn't break because the capes are kind of thin. And that's when you can um, trim it along his feet and make any refinements that you want before that you bake him up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was really fun for me, and as you know, it is all about me. So, uh, the next year is bringing us a lot of adventures, a lot of fun things to do in polymer clay, and I hope you'll be there to join me. I put links below to um, give you a chance to check things out, because there's lots of details and interesting things I'd really like you to see. Uh, polymer clay adventure is one of the best ideas I've ever heard of, and um, it's a virtual retreat. Uh, every month in 2015, you'll have a class released uh, every other week. So that's 24 classes. You've got 21 world-class teachers and me, so that's 22. And uh, I think for the price, it's astonishing value because I only own one uh, instructional DVD that I've ever bought myself. And it was 39 bucks, and I had to pay shipping. Uh, and it's really good, but you know. So uh, Polymer Clay Adventure offers you quite a bit more, and I think you'll really like it. Also, uh, Curious.com is doing these courses, um, and I've got a couple on there, and it's really neat because uh, the 10 video format gives me an opportunity to really uh, delve into projects and delve into techniques in a way that you've been asking me for, and I hope that you really like, and they're very reasonably priced. Uh, lastly, um, Polymer Cafe Magazine has given me the chance to be in every issue in 2015 uh, with a little column I'm going to be writing. And this column is about exploring um, new techniques and new ways to use existing techniques. And I think you really like it. It's really fun. Uh, they're all easy. So uh, they're things you can take on just uh, when you have a few minutes to spare. So I'm really hoping to see you next year. I've really enjoyed this year a lot, and I want to say thanks again.